Imagine you go to the supermarket and a loaf of bread costs 200 billion. Unbelievable, but actually real. At least when your country has been hit by hyperinflation. But what leads to this catastrophic phenomenon? And which countries experience the worst hyperinflation in history? Let's take a look. Inflation is the rate that shows how much the price for goods and services rise. A low inflation rate is the norm in most countries around the world. The U.S. inflation rate, for example, in 2019 was 2.3%. In the Eurozone, 1.3%. The American economist Philip Kagan was the first to classify hyperinflation. He stated that the phenomenon happens when a country's inflation rate exceeds 50% per month. There are different reasons this happens. Even though each case is unique, there are common patterns. For example, in most cases, the economy is already weak and there is a shock caused by war, international isolation, or natural disasters. The road to hyperinflation usually comes after a chain of events, and it usually happens as follows. Tax revenues are drastically reduced. The reason can be external factors like war, a sudden change in commodities prices, or country-specific reasons like political transition, bad monetary policies, and even corruption. The government starts printing money. The supply of money pushes inflation up. The rise impacts government revenues. The country experiences a period of high inflation, affecting the government's budget and confidence in its institutions. The government then prints more money and resorts to measures that fail to control inflation. The inflation rate accelerates. The currency value collapses. Inflation explodes. Country experiences hyperinflation. Before the First World War, cases of hyperinflation were rare. Prices rose during the French Revolution and American Civil War, but hyperinflation is mostly a modern phenomenon. The following ranking was created by economists Steve Hankey and Nicholas Cruz. So here we go. Let's see which countries produced the five worst cases of hyperinflation in the last 100 years. Number five, Greece. This is Greece, the country that gave us democracy, philosophers, and probably the world's earliest currency unit, the drachma. It is also the country that experienced the fifth worst case of hyperinflation in history. The worst month was October 1944, when the inflation rate was 13,800%. The New York Times reported that month that one dollar was worth 300 million drachmas in the port of Patras. To understand how the situation got that bad, it is important to go back four years. The country was occupied by the Axis forces during the Second World War. The new government added to its expenses the support of its army, which had approximately 400,000 soldiers. This expense represented between one-third to three-fifths of all the country's expenditures during that time. And notes advanced from the Greek bank paid the bill. When the occupation ended, tax revenues covered only 6% of total expenditures. Another point of instability that contributed to the hyperinflation was the government's policy of paying with gold sovereigns, a British gold coin. This reduced public trust in the economy and added uncertainty to the situation. In 1940, a British gold coin could be exchanged for 1,100 drachma. By December 1944, it could be exchanged for 19.9 trillion drachma. In October 1944, the exiled Greek government returned and implemented plans to curtail inflation. The country continued to be plagued with political instability, internal conflicts, and other difficulties. Post-war Greece was marked by other inflationary periods. The country joined the European Union in 1981 and adopted the euro in 2001. Since then, inflation remains under control. Number 4. Germany one of the most famous hyperinflation periods in history happened in Germany during the Weimar Republic. Events took a dramatic turn in October 1923 when wholesale prices increased by 29,500%. A loaf of bread in 1922 cost 163 marks. By September 1923, the price had increased to 1.5 billion. 
In November, it was 200 billion. The situation got so extreme that people were paid out at an hourly basis. Workers rushed to stores to secure food and produce before prices soared again. The prices doubled every 3.7 days on average. It was normal to see people carrying money in wheelbarrows. Restaurants stopped displaying menus. It was pointless. By the time a person finished eating, prices had gone up. Salaries and pensions lost their value fast. A university teacher, an esteemed position in society that came with a respectable salary, could no longer feed his family. A combination of factors led to this nightmare. After the First World War, the country had to shoulder the blame for starting the conflict, pay exorbitant reparations, relinquish control of colonies and territories, and limit the size of its army. All of this would already be a source of destabilization, but there was more. Germany had used bonds to fund the war. The plan was to conquer territories and pay the debt back with the conquered money. But in reality, the new republic was created already with a colossal debt resulting from pre-war bonds. Some economists estimate that it was probably around 175% of the GDP, with no option of a bailout. Quite the opposite, Germany needed to pay reparations to the other countries in hard currency. The government then started printing money to pay its debt and to buy foreign currency. The more it printed, the more the currency tanked and inflation rose. People realized money had lost its value and rushed to spend. This created a vicious circle. In 1914, a dollar was valued at around 4.2 marks. By November 1923, the exchange rate for a single US dollar was 4.2 trillion marks. The situation was stabilized somewhat by a new currency, backed with hard assets in 1924, but by then millions of middle-class Germans had lost their savings. This period was so traumatic that some people say to this day, it still haunts the public and continues to be an influential factor in the country's debt aversion. Number three, Yugoslavia. Taking third place on the podium, the bronze medal goes to the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. In the first month of 1994, the inflation rate rose 313 million percent. During this time, you would be able to buy a loaf of bread with a 500 million dinar note. That's it, just one. The situation got so crazy that the cost of a pack of cigarettes in the morning would be the equivalent of one cigarette in the evening. The money value was so high that the government kept introducing new plans to cut the zeros. It didn't work. The situation continued to deteriorate. On January 1st, 1994, the government knocked nine zeros off the notes with a monetary plan. By the last week of the same month, it had already printed a 10 million dinar note. To understand how this happened, we need to look at the disintegration of the former Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia. From June 1991 to March 1992, Slovenia, Croatia, Macedonia, and Bosnia-Herzegovina declared independence. The remaining two countries, Serbia and Montenegro, formed what was called the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The war that followed independence led to international sanctions which include a trade embargo. The country relied heavily on imports, and the effects of sanctions had a huge impact on the economy. The country had four regional central banks, in addition to the official one. All of them, some of them illegally, conducted credit provisions and issued dinar notes without oversight. The newly formed Federal Republic had also two outside republics formed by ethnic Serbian majorities, Republika Srpska in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Republic of Serbian Krajina in Croatia. These two republics also went through hyperinflation periods with similar magnitude. The Republika Srpska, for example, had an inflation rate of 297 million percent in January 1994. Later in 1994, the government created a new monetary plan with a new currency backed by the German mark. After that, inflation decreased to double-digit levels in annual terms, which persisted for years. Following Montenegro's independence in 2006, the country ceased to exist. Number 2. Zimbabwe The silver medal goes to the most recent case on our list, Zimbabwe. The African country had the world's second highest inflation in the first of the 21st century in November 2008. 
The prices increased 79.6 billion percent. A bag of sugar cost about 90 billion Zimbabwe dollars, and salaries of unskilled workers were around 200 billion. That was the equivalent of $10 a month. 150 billion Zimbabwean dollars got you 20 eggs, and an average retirement pension paid out 130 billion, which at one point was worth less than $1. To understand what led to this, we need to understand history. After years of fighting between the white regime and black nationalists, Zimbabwe gained independence in 1980. Robert Mugabe emerged as a national leader and was able to consolidate his powers. During his government, he moved toward an authoritarian regime of one-party rule and joined the First Congo War in 1990 and the second in 1998. In 2000, he promoted the Fast Track Land Reform Program, which seized white-owned land without any compensation, ignoring a former joint effort with the British government. To make that possible, the central bank started lending directly to new farmers to finance the operations. This led to farmers being replaced by inexperienced, sometimes first-time landowners. Together with the impact of severe droughts, Agricultural production and exports declined significantly as a result. The economy stagnated. Food shortages and riots started to take place. The involvement in the wars and accusations of human rights violations raised international criticism and the country became increasingly isolated. All the uncertainty had a profound effect on the foreign investments, which fell from $400 million in 1998 to $30 million in 2007. Since its independence, there was no year that the government had a balanced budget, and never a surplus. When inflation accelerated, the government tried measures like redenomination of the currency, limiting on money withdrawal, and a price freeze. Hyperinflation followed, and the population moved to foreign currencies, which exacerbated the situation. In 2009, the country created a multi-currency dollarization system that replaced the Zimbabwe dollar. Although it calmed the situation for a while, until today, even after Mugabe's deposition via a coup in 2017, there are still reports that the inflation rate is above 50% in the country. Number 1. Hungary Hungary experienced after the Second World War what is, to this day, the world record in inflation. The country had an inflation rate of 4.19 quadrillion percent in July 1946. Historians recall that the famous Hungarian poet, George Faludi, was paid 300 billion pago by his publisher. With the money, he was able to buy one chicken, one liter of olive oil, and a few vegetables at a local Budapest market. During this time, prices were doubling every 15 hours. With such high inflation, people started to rely on the black market. The desperation of the government was so big that it imposed the death penalty for dealings in black market trade in 1945. A note with a face value of 100 quintillion pago was issued. Until today, no banknote with a higher denomination was ever issued. The roots of this nightmare are in the war damage, lack of reserves, reparations, costs of occupation, among other reasons. After the war, the situation was catastrophic. In total, economists estimate that 40% of Hungary's non-human wealth was destroyed. This had a huge effect on the production capacity and put pressure on prices. The Soviets signed the armistice with Hungary and set reparation costs at $300 million, which included the removal of equipment. The Hungarians also had to pay for Soviet troops stationed in the country. According to estimates, Hungary's after-war bill was between $600 and $900 million. With a huge deficit and isolated, Hungary had no other option than printing money. It printed so much that currency circulation passed from 25 billion pango in July 1945 to 1.6 trillion by January 1946, reached 65 quadrillion by May, and 47 septillion pango by July 1946. In 1947, the Hungarian government announced a reform, created a new currency, and stipulated rules such as new central bank regulations to government loans. Prices started falling and went back to normal in the following months.
So, that's it for this video, the top 5 worst hyperinflation cases in history. Keep in mind that this phenomenon is not some specter from the past. Recent examples and events happening in Zimbabwe and Venezuela show that even today, countries can struggle to control inflation. I hope you like our video and subscribe to our channel.